Hello again. In this video, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to introduce the concept of learning curves. I will develop a second video where I will calculate some specific examples and show you how it works and how to interpret this. This short video will just introduce the concept to you. So, learning curves are, uh, uh, are, uh, are um, a tool to understand the rate of improvement uh, that you are doing and it allows you to calculate the expected time to complete uh, tasks in the future given how long it's taking you now and your improvement rate so we're going to we're going to show you three different ways to calculate it uh, we'll do that introduction fairly quickly and then do a separate video with some specific examples and we'll finish with a little bit of a discussion of the strategic implications of learning curves so Learning curves are based on the premise that people and organizations become better at their tasks or t as tasks are repeated. So the first time you do something, you're learning how to do it. The second time you get a little better. The third time you get better. The fourth time you get better and so on and so on. And so if you are estimating how many people you'll need or, or how much you should charge to produce 10 units, understanding the learning curve allows you to know how much time things are going to take. Uh, the learning curves typically follow a negative exponential distribution. That's good to know, but it's not something that you'll need to be able to, to calculate because we're going to show you uh, three approaches to doing it. The other thing that Merrick's uh, discussion is, with the learning curve, the improvement is dramatic at the beginning and it and the rate of improvement decreases over time. So as you get better at something, your your ability to improve on it uh, goes down. And I think that 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 makes intuitive sense. And that's the premise here in calculating learning curves. So why do people? How do people use learning curves? Uh, as I said before, labor forecasting. If you are planning to produce a hundred and you know that there's an improvement rate, then you can you can plan the number of people you'll need, scheduling the same way, costs and budgets, people who are consultants or, and or toll manufacturers who produce for other people will use learning curves to, to produce estimates uh, for, for quotes uh, and supply chain evaluation negotiations. And strategically, it allows you to benchmark your performance against others uh, and, and in terms of seeing how you're doing and whether you're uh, as efficient as other organizations. So the basic premise here is that learning curves uh, allow you to calculate the time to produce a unit in the future. So you've got uh, T, which is the unit or cost or unit time for the first unit. We're going to talk in terms of time. So this is the time it takes to do the first unit. L is the learning curve rate and N is the nth unit. Now what's tricky, this is, this is the easiest way to calculate learning curves, but it only works for specific instances because N is not the number of times uh, we're uh, uh, we're doing it, it is the number of times that output is doubled. So it works for one, two, four, eight, 16, and so on. So if you need to do the 10th unit, you'll have to use one of the other approaches, but this nice, simple approach works for those doubled. So here, if the first unit takes 10 hours, 70% is our learning curve, the fourth unit will require doubling twice. So if I say, how long will it take us to, to produce the fourth unit? We know that then one, two, four, that's doubled twice. Uh, so we have 10 times 0.7 squared equals 4.9 hours. One point I'll make here, if I could, is if you're ever calculating a learning rate and the number you calculate is higher then the time that the first unit took, uh, you've done something wrong. So that's always a simple check to see if, if you're on the right track. So again, the arithmetic approach is the simplest approach. Labor costs decline at a constant rate and learning rate as production doubles. An example using an 80% learning curve. So the first unit took 100 hours 
the second unit takes uh, 80 hours, 0.8 times 100. Uh, point, uh, the fourth unit is 0.8 times 80, which is L. Uh, 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 because we're we're going we're going down at a at a constant rate, so that's an easy one uh, to calculate. But it only works, as I said, one, two, four, eight, sixteen. The logarithmic approach is the approach that lets you calculate it for uh, any unit, and and for the logarithmic approach, you get the time for the nth unit is equal to the time for the first unit times n to this exponent b and b is the log of the learning rate divided by log 2. So it is a coefficient that you need to calculate. It's not an onerous calculation uh, but it is a little bit more work than the arithmetic approach and it allows you to do for numbers that aren't on that doubling path. So let's look at a example here. Learning rate is 80%. The first unit took 100 hours. The third unit, so we know we can't use the doubling uh, factor, so we can't use the arithmetic approach, is equal to 100. The learning rate, uh, the, uh, the time for the first unit times 3, which is the third unit, to b, and b is the log of the learning rate divided by the log of 2, which gives us negative 0.322. Uh, and so it's often worth calculating that uh, and keeping it as a separate number because you might need to use it several times. Uh, a, a couple of hints, and I'll go through this in the video when we're doing the calculation is, uh, when you're entering it in your calculator, put this in brackets so that you don't get in trouble with the order of operations. Uh, and I would also always uh, calculate it previously. But again, I'll go into that in more detail in the video where we show some examples. So in this case, 70.2 is the time that we expect the third unit to take. Still relatively straightforward, but a little bit more complex than uh, than the arithmetic approach, but ap applicable to a wider range uh, of of problems. The 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 third approach we have is like the logarithmic approach, but what happens in that one is that somebody calculates uh, n to the b for you. And so you've got the time for the nth unit is equal to the time for the first unit times a coefficient that you pull from a table that you have in your textbook. And so in that one, the only drawback is that it, you have to have a very precise learning rate uh, and uh, to be able to use the table. So this one is like uh, more flexible than the arithmetic approach because you can do any number, but you have to have a learning rate that is in your table. So the table looks like this. So for a, for a learning rate of 70%, uh, of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 10, 15, you find different tables. This is the coefficient for the unit time, which means that for the fourth unit, you multiply T1 times 0.49. Uh, and for the 10th unit, you multiply it by 0.306. The other benefit of the coefficient approach is you also get uh, a coefficient that lets you calculate the total time. And what that says is that to get the time for the fourth unit, you would multiply it by 0.490 to get the time that it would take to make the first four units, you would multiply T1 by times 2.758. So rather than having to calculate each of them, the coefficient gives you a, a, a factor where you can get that total. Now, if you had a learning rate of 0.76, this table wouldn't do you any good. But if you're at 0.7 and 0.85, uh, or whatever factors you get in your table, this, this 
coefficient approach uh, works very, very nicely. I'm going to just highlight a couple here. For our example on the next slide, uh, at a learning rate of 0.85, uh, we have 0.723 is the unit time for the fourth unit. Uh, and for the total time, it's 3.345. Let's just remember those numbers for a second. So here's our example. The first boat requires 125,000 hours to build. Labor cost is $40 an hour in case you're estimating labor. Uh, learning factor is 85%. So we want the time it would take for the fourth unit we would multiply 125,000 times that number 0.723 that we took off the table and it would require 90,375 hours for the fourth boat. Uh, and we can multiply that by, by uh, uh, $40 an hour and get an estimate of the cost of producing the fourth boat. For if we want to know we have someone who's buying all four boats and we need to know how much time those first four boats will take. We would use that the coefficient for uh, total time. And so the, the time to complete the first four boats. So in this case, this is all four. Uh, is 125,000 hours times 3.345, which was the coefficient we pulled out there for 418,125 hours for all four boats. So the coefficient approach, as long as you have a nice even uh, learning rate, the coefficient approach is the easiest and the, and the nicest to use. Uh, in general, you should be able to use all three approaches, uh, but uh, figuring out the one that works best in the circumstance you have uh, is important. Uh, third boat required a hundred thousand. So, sorry, the coefficient allows you to work backwards too. Uh, so if you have a third boat required a hundred thousand hours and the learning factor is 0.85%, uh, what is your new estimate for the first boat so that you can go calculate, uh, back you would go 0.773, which was the under 85% was the, the unit coefficient. And then you could say T1 is 129,366. I will show you a couple of examples that, uh, of that sort of reverse engineering uh, when I do the video with, with some examples. But the coefficient approach allows you to pick things from the table and reverse engineer numbers as well. So what are some of the strategic implications uh, of, uh, of using uh, learning curves? Uh, if you want your curve to be steeper, that is you want your improvement rate to be faster, uh, it would allow you to, uh, to have a more aggressive pricing policy because your costs will go down quicker than your competitors were. Uh, it will allow you to focus on continuing cost reduction build on shared experience, keep capacity ahead of demand. So if you're in a new market where you're growing demand, you want to be getting better at it. So, so understanding the learning curve and accelerating the learning curve uh, make a lot of sense and are an important part of strategy for any firm. There are some limitations of learning curves. Uh, the, the limitations are that learning curves differ from company to company as well as industry to industry. So you have to develop estimates for yourself. You can't say, well, on average, this is, it, it, this is what the industry is because it might not work for you. So learning curve parameters need to be estimated yourself uh, internally. Uh, and learning curves are often based on time estimates, which must be accurate and should be reevaluated when appropriate. So again, you can use them to predict the, f the future. Uh, you need to do a good job of, of tracking the, your time estimates, use them to predict the future and then go and, and evaluate your performance and see if you've got your learning rate correct. And if you are actually meeting the objectives that you have. It, it might not be that you uh, that 
that you're not being efficient. It may be that you re uh, you wrongly estimated your learning curve parameters. So it's always worth uh, reevaluating because it depends on uh, having good numbers. And so uh, it's a powerful tool, but it shouldn't be the only tool that you use. Uh, the, the other thing is, you know, any changes in personnel, design, or process can be expected to alter the learning curve. The learning curve only works if you are doing the same thing over and over again. As you change, you have to restart your learning curve and, and, and calculate it uh, going forward. Learning curves do not always apply to indirect labor or material. Just because you get better at it doesn't mean you will necessarily use less inputs. So you need to be careful about that. Uh, and the culture of the workplace, resource availability and changes in the process. So if anything else changes, uh, you're, it'll throw your learning curve off. So again, as I've said over and over and over again, these tools can provide you a number, but they can't make a decision for you. You have to look at the qualitative factors outside of your numerical factors and say, are, is everything the same? What else might change? How should I adjust these estimates going forward? That said, given this simple approach, uh, it can provide you some real insight into budgeting, scheduling, labor estimation, if you have some simple estimates of learning curve. That's all I wanted to really introduce here in, in, in this video. Uh, I will do a separate video where I work through some examples to show you uh, how to calculate and interpret uh, results based on various questions. Thanks for your time.